All right, so I'm back again with one more Nikon review. And if you followed my channel, you're probably thinking, you've reviewed all the Nikons, but I haven't. I missed one of the most popular ones, the Nikon S2. Uh, and this is actually the most produced and probably the most talked about Nikon S series camera. Has a lot of similarities to the Contax 2, but for some reason I just never really uh, found one. I guess I was more drawn to the SP for one, so I looked for those more. Uh, and uh, I, I can't say I was in a huge hurry to collect them all, but it, it happened anyways. Uh, this is a sort of earlier chrome dial version. All the dials on top are chromed. Some of the later ones, they're blackened, and the, uh, the letters and numbers are all white, so they're a little bit easier to see. Um, I, I don't really see a big difference. I could definitely see the black dial being a little bit more useful if you shoot out in the sun a lot, because these will reflect a little bit of sunlight. But at the same time, if you shoot in the dark or darker environments, I could kind of see the chrome dials being a little bit more visible and easier to use. So all in all, it's a, it's a very solid camera. I was actually surprised. By its overall look and design, it looks to have a lot more in common with the S3 than most other Nikon cameras. Uh, but it, it's got a sort of a hardier build. The, uh, the metal seems to be a little bit thicker than the uh, S3, SP, and S4. It's more in line with the original Nikon S. Uh, both with the uh, the heavier metal and the uh, the older style multi-ringed exposure dial, where you have the uh, the faster speeds on top and the slower speeds on bottom. Uh, incidentally, speaking of that, that's one of the only problems this camera seems to have. Is normally you're supposed to set it to this um, this red dial right there, the one thirtieth of a second, and when you do that, it activates everything on the lower dial. But for some reason, mine still seems to fire at like about one hundred twenty-fifth of a second. And I have to kind of like uh, move it and lift it part way up like that. And when I do that, it kind of seems to do it sometimes. Probably have to move to a slower shutter speed, but it gets knocked down pretty easily. There you go. I got one uh, quarter of a second. So that's a bit of a frustration. That seems to be some sort of defect from uh, just over usage or something. It doesn't seem like that's how they were intended to be built from the manuals I've seen online. Uh, I don't know how common of a problem that is. I imagine it's kind of rare because I haven't really seen many people refer to it. I could probably fix it myself if I took off this dial and just kind of realigned it, but I just haven't been brave enough to do that yet. Uh, the other thing is the, uh, the little rim here kind of slides around. I haven't had a chance to really work on this one. So it's not a big deal, but you see that tiny little black mark there would mark your actual frame. And you can kind of tighten it into place at the end, but it keeps getting knocked out. There's a little screw here, one of those tiny little worm screws that I think needs to be tightened down more, but I just don't have a screwdriver small enough to fit in there at the moment. Uh, aside from those little minor defects, which I assume probably came from it getting a CLA, because the, the shutter speeds seem to be very accurate. They might be a tad bit too fast, but they seem to be more accurate than some of the other cameras I received, like the S3 and the uh, Vintage SP. So it's at least on par with those, probably better than either of them, and about on par with the um, the other cameras in the collection. The, uh, the S2 does have a feature that always kind of strikes me as interesting. It has this strange um, flash sync mechanism right here. We have to manually set the flash speed. And the other cameras technically do have that, but it's it's built in around the um, it's the rim around the shutter speed dial, and you kind of lift it up and move it. And there's the little letters up here, kind of give you I forget what it is, but about four flash modes to pick from. I forget what they are off the top of my head. But with the S2, you actually have to select the actual speed you're going to shoot at, which is kind of interesting. Um, I can't think of too many other cameras that have a feature like that. Uh, but at the same time, I don't know how, how many people are going to use flash because you actually have to connect it with the, the PC port right there, which is true of all the Nikon rangefinders and most rangefinders in general, but not something I see a lot of people using nowadays. I would say the big draw with the SP is the viewfinder. Um, it has a pretty decent sized bright viewfinder. It's, uh, it has 50 millimeter fixed frame lines in it. There's no parallax correction marks, which seems like a bit of a short sighted thing to do. But uh, it's very good for a 50 millimeter lens. Strangely, it's wider than 50 if you look through it. Uh, you would think they would have been smart enough to make it about 35, so the total view, uh, viewfinder would be about 35 millimeters. And then you'd have the 50 millimeter frame line, so you could use the, uh, the camera with at least two lenses and no external finder. But for some reason, they only made it about like 40, maybe 45 millimeters wide, so it's only a little bit wider than the 50 millimeter frame lines. I think that's a weird short-sighted thing they did. I really wish they'd made it a little bit wider so you could kind of shoot this camera with a 35 millimeter lens and no optional viewfinder. Now that said, I am actually shooting it with the 28 millimeter lens and viewfinder. 
kind of see right there, uh, which is one of my favorites. Um, all in all, I gotta say I like this camera. It's very easy to use, uh, even with a little the flaw on the uh, shutter speed. I don't really use the slow shutter speeds that much, so it, it doesn't bother me. So I have to say that um, I really like it. I think if you wanna shoot predominantly a 50 millimeter lens, this might be the best camera for you. And even some of the wider ones, like the 28, there, there isn't a lot of good 28 and wide angle support for the uh, like the 21 and 25 millimeter lenses, as rare as they are. So if you want to shoot one of those lenses, I think, again, the S2 is a really good option because you're going to have to use some sort of external finder on most cameras. Uh, and I got to say, I really like that. And back to the viewfinder, I mentioned the frame lines and my kind of disappointment in the lack of 35 millimeter frame lines. One reason people often cite the S2 as being their favorite is because the... Uh, the viewfinder, uh, or that is to say, the viewfinder is you know, nice, it's a solid viewfinder, but it's kind of unremarkable. It's really the range finder. The range finder patch holds up very well in the S2s. It's usually very bright and high contrast, so it's easy to focus. So again, it's, it's a great coupling for like a 50 millimeter f1.4, which does kind of have a finicky focus about it. Uh, that being said, a lot of people will say the S2 is pretty much the only camera you need to buy or it's the, the one that's really worth looking into in this line because it has the best viewfinder. And I will give it credit, it probably does have the best viewfinder, but I would say the, um, the original S's, the rangefinder patch has about the same fidelity in those, but it is kind of a, a narrow viewfinder and you don't have any sort of frame lines, you're just looking at like basically a 50 millimeter approximation. Uh, and of course you have the film, um, the advance and rewind knobs, whereas you actually have a fold out crank here and you have the lever here. So uh, there are definitely some advantages the S2 has over the original S with about the same build quality. Um, now when it comes to the S3, S4, SP, I would say that uh, this, this camera definitely does have a better uh, rangefinder patch than my S3, but my S3 is in pretty rough shape. Um, I know a lot of people complain about the S3s and say that the, uh, the rangefinder patches aren't great, so that does seem to be kind of a defect that a lot of them have. Uh, I would say my SPs have a very, very similar view, uh, rangefinder patch to this S2. It, it kind of depends because, again, I have two of them, but I would say they're, they're very close. The S2 is probably better by a very, very narrow, very narrow margin, but uh, really not that much. And again, when you consider the SPs have a lot more frame lines to choose from, I, I would still prefer shooting something like an 85 or a 105 on the SP, I think, even if the rangefinder patch isn't quite as bright. I will say my S4 actually has a rangefinder patch that's about as bright as the S2, probably a little bit dimmer, but pretty close. Um, and that's one thing I wonder about is I hear a lot of people complain about how like uh, the Nikon rangefinders have these terrible dim viewfinder patches and that Leicas or, you know, name some other camera, some, you know, uh, I think I've heard people say that like uh, some pretty obscure kind of crappy point and shoot uh, film cameras like uh, Pitaris and Yashica Electros and stuff like that have a better rangefinder patch, which I don't think is true. I really don't think that's true at all. Uh, I think a lot of people who are making these comparisons probably owned a Nikon S2 or an SP or an S3 at some point in the past. It probably sat around in their house for like two years and never really got used. And then it, um, you know, they sold it after shooting maybe like four rolls of film with it, then picked up one of those other cameras a lot more recently and used it more. And just their, their memory has kind of failed them and they, they really sort of underestimate the, uh, the Nikon mechanisms and overestimate the mechanism they currently have. Because uh, I know a lot of people always say, oh, that's one thing, Leica has a way, way better rangefinder patch. It never fades. But I've seen some, uh, some Leicas and not even like old M2s and M3s that are like 60 years old. I'm talking like M6s and stuff that aren't much more than like 25 years old that don't really have great rangefinder patches and people pay way more money for them and they'll talk about how they're like perfect cameras and everything. So I think there's probably not quite as much um, weight to that rangefinder argument as a lot of people will say. Uh, regardless, I, I do like the S2. Um, it's a nice camera, very solid camera. If I was going to shoot, uh, predominantly shoot a 50 millimeter lens, I think the S2 probably would be my go-to camera, especially if you're going to go with the faster f1.4 or even one of those, uh, the much rarer, more expensive f1.1s, because it does seem like the, um, just that viewfinder with little 50 millimeter frame lines in it is, is just perfect for a 50 millimeter lens combo. There's nothing to get in the way, nothing to confuse or clutter the viewfinder. And you do have the really good rangefinder patch, which is definitely better than uh, some of the ones I've seen in like the S3 and probably the S4. Comparable to the SP, I think it kind of depends on which SP model you're comparing it to. 
But I do have to say, I really like the, uh, the overall design of it. It's a little heavier than the other cameras, uh, but I, I have to say I kind of like that because I feel like if I if I kind of knock it into something It's not gonna get dented. It might get a little scratched or some chrome might wear off, but it's it's gonna survive and uh, You can't say that for every camera There's plenty of cameras out there that you knock them around a little bit and they'll break I think a great example is a lot of the Cosina cameras that were made in the late 90s and early 2000s and uh, Some of them were branded as Cosinas, but not many most of them were branded as Voigtlanders and some of them were actually branded as uh, Zeiss icons and uh, those cameras are kind of notorious because while some of them do have metal bodies, some of them have plastic bodies that are, are kind of fragile, and they all have the old uh, square copal shutters that are made out of a thin plastic, and those are very, those are much more prone to breaking than you might imagine, and it costs a fortune to have them replaced. It's cheaper to buy a new camera than, than to have one of those shutters replaced, especially nowadays. Maybe 30 years ago it probably would have been worth it, but nowadays it's really not even worth it. Um, so that's kind of a weird aside right there on camera quality. But I will say, S2 has a great, great build quality. Uh, and I, I don't know if somebody CLA'd this in the past. Like I said, I think some of the flaws with the um, the little rim right here with the film counter and the uh, the shutter speed dials not quite lining up, I think those might have come from somebody doing a CLA in the past that was a little, a little subpar, but... The shutter curtains were in perfect condition and they look original. The uh, the shutter speed seemed to be very accurate. I think they might be a tad bit fast. Uh, they don't seem to really be clapping and they don't seem way, way off like I've seen on some other cameras. So I would say, you know, if you can buy one of these cameras at a reasonable price, which it's tricky because I, I got this one camera only for about uh, 250 bucks, which was okay. Not not a steal, but not like a, not a rip off either. I see a lot of the black dial ones go for a lot more. I'll see people ask five or six hundred dollars for a black dial camera, like body only with no lens. I think that's very extreme. If that same camera came with a 50 millimeter f 1.4 lens, I'd say that's probably a more reasonable price, but probably still a little on the high side. Um, I would say if you can find a chrome, uh, chrome body like this, where it's all chrome, uh, camera body only, I'd say 200, 250. That's, that's probably somewhere in the right neighborhood. Add a lens to it, um, you know, it gets a little tricky. 50 millimeter f2, I'd add another like $50 in value. 50, mil, 50 millimeter f1.4, maybe 100, 150, kind of, that gets really tricky because it kind of depends on the exact lens and its age because the later ones were better than the earlier ones. Uh, but again, I'm kind of getting into the weeds there. But I would say for a setup like this uh, with uh, the camera and a standard 50 millimeter lens, which I, I don't have one at, at hand right now, but I'd say uh, you know three or four hundred dollars is pretty reasonable to maybe even a tad bit on the high side uh, for a black dial camera. I'd add maybe one hundred and fifty dollars in value because they are rarer and they do seem to be more sought after. But you're not really getting anything different. I know a lot of people say, oh, technically the black dials have, uh, I believe the um, this back door is kind of different and the, uh, the the film plane or the pressure plate are different or something. I think there is some truth to that. They were made later and they're, you know, I'm sure they made some design changes, but I don't think that's really going to affect the the quality of the camera or the shooting experience. That's basically just things that Nikon did to streamline production, I would imagine. So definitely camera worth looking into. And I, I do, I, I can sympathize. I'd kind of skipped on the S2 because it seemed unremarkable. I, I preferred the, uh, the SP, the sort of the glorious camera in the lineup. But I can see why a lot of people um, start off with the, the S2. If you want a rangefinder camera, a, a sort of a beginner's camera to dip your toes in the rangefinder world, the S2 is probably one of the better cameras out there. They're way cheaper than any Leica. They're a lot more reliable than the Contax cameras. I've heard some people say, oh, well, the Contax cameras have, you know, better something, and they'll name some minor feature, like um, they'll see like the helicoils or this little, this turning wheel up here work better on the, the Contaxes. And it's like, well, that might be true, but the Contax shutters are very difficult to repair and uh, notoriously easy to break. So I don't know if I'd put too much credence in the minor little convenience features like this wheel, which personally, I, you know, I have these wheels on all the cameras and I almost never use them. And not only that, I really think they're only meant to be used with the 50 millimeter lenses that are uh, cuffless because with any lens that has the, uh, this cuff around it, they become a lot harder to focus. So I, would, I, would, uh, I wouldn't put a lot of water in arguments that focus on the, uh, the little wheel right here. It's an interesting feature, but I, I think it's a very ancillary feature that was just kind of thrown on for, um, you know, I don't even know why it's on there. I guess the, I guess Context did that originally, so Nikon just kind of copied it. Uh, 
So I, I wouldn't put a lot of uh, weight on that particular feature or any arguments surrounding it. Um, so that's pretty much it. I think that's a, it's a pretty basic overview of the S2, I know. It's probably the most popular, talked about camera in the lineup, so I feel like I should say more, but at the same time, I kind of know what's all been said. Uh, at some point, I'll come back and probably do a comparison between all the different camera models. So I hope you enjoy that. Here's my review of the Nikon S2. Tune in next time when I've got uh, some other crazy thing to review.